Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out the long range with a couple of Colt AR-15s. In my hand, I have an older 1971 manufacturer, SP-1. The SP-1 is chambered for 5.56 or 223, and it has a 20 inch barrel. It's a pencil weight barrel. It's a very lightweight barrel, and it has a one and 12 inch twist. These guns are really you know, cool guns are lightweight. This is what the M16 was originally supposed to be, a super light rifle that the, uh, you know, would replace the M14 in military service in Vietnam. And again, this rifle was built in 1971. Has a shorter M16, M16A1 stock. You'll notice that it lacks a forward assist here, which came later in 1967 as the M16A1. Even though this gun was built in 1971, the civilian model rifles did not adopt the A1 features such as the forward assist until much later in the, the product's life cycle. But again, it has a pencil weight barrel, one and 12 twist. And what I wanna do this afternoon is compare this rifle accuracy wise with iron sights to this rifle. This is an AR-15A2 Sporter. This one has all the features of the A2 rifle. It does not have a removable carrying handle. So that's, that's more like the A4. The carrying handle is integrated into the receiver, but it does have the combat adjustable, both windage and elevation rear sights, 20 inch barrel, one and seven inch twist, slightly heavier barrel profile, and the, the sights are slightly different than the SP-1. Same sight radius, but the aperture is a little bit more precise. The front sight post is square versus round. And honestly, I slightly prefer the sight picture of the A2. Of course, I've been shooting the A2 much longer than I have been shooting the SP-1s. This has a slightly longer stock, which is the A2 type stock. Ford assist, brass deflector, all that good stuff. But again, it has that one and seven inch barrel twist. I've brought out some Wolf Gold, which is Taiwanese 5.56 five, spec ammunition. It's 55 grain ball, over 3,000 uh, 3, feet per second in velocity. Fairly decent stuff. I can get two inch, two and a half inch groups typically out of it with a scoped rifle that's shooting good. We're gonna use this ammunition, iron sights at 100 yards, and we're gonna see which one of these rifles turns in the best groups. The reason I'm doing that is because I've seen discussions on the internet where people say that the one and 12 inch twist barrels of the old SP-1 rifles aren't as accurate as the one and seven inch twist rifles like the rifle you see here. Some folks believe, falsely so, that the one and 12 inch twist barrel cannot properly stabilize the bullet. And when I say a one and 12 inch twist, that means that the bullet makes one complete revolution every 12 inches of travel in flight. And the one and seven obviously is making seven inches of travel every time it makes one revolution in flight. So we're gonna take these rifles out, shoot them at 100 yards, shoot a couple of groups, and see which one turns in the best groups with the same ammunition. Not a scientific test, but it should be fun. Let's see how they do. All right, I have five rounds of the Wolf Gold loaded up. I picked this stuff up from LuckyGunner.com. I'm gonna fire the SP-1 first. I do not have iPro on because honestly, I can't get a good sight picture with it on. So I do not recommend you shoot rifles without eye protection. I'm taking a risk in doing this and I understand that, but I don't recommend you do it. All right, first five shot group, SP-1. Got the target cam running over here that's recording the target down range. And let's see what we get. Five rounds. Woo! Stringing them out there. All right, not the best group. Let's go ahead and grab the A2. Load up five more rounds. I have to run down range and reposition the camera here really quick. And we will fire a group out of this one. We're not just firing. One group each, we're going to fire several. We'll show you the best that each rifle turns in. A lot of it will have to do with the shooter, not just the gun. All right, run down range real quick and readjust our target cam so we can see the next target.
All right, so we got our target cam adjusted to the new target. Five rounds of the Wolf Gold in the A2, which is technically a sporter target model. All right, let's see how this one does. like the trigger better on the A2, probably because I just broke it in more. Let's see what we did. Uh, hard to tell. Take a run down range, take a look at the target. I wanted to give you the history on this A2, which is technically a sporter target model, caliber 223. This rifle you'll notice is missing a bayonet lug, and it also has a big hole drilled here in the receiver and it's plugged. This gun was made just before the 1994 ban, which was enacted by President Clinton. It was known as the assault weapons ban. Colt was producing these rifles. They purposely neutered them without any directive from the government. They were doing it in hopes that the government wouldn't pass the assault weapons ban. A lot of people got mad at Colt for doing that. They, again, took the bayonet lugs off voluntarily. They put this block in here, which made it very difficult to convert the rifle either legally or illegally into a machine gun. You can see the big block that they put in here. And they weakened the receiver, some folks would say, because of the size of the hole they had drilled and plugged in the receiver. But this gun is almost impossible to convert to, obviously, a machine gun. But yeah, so I thought that was kind of interesting that this gun was made just before the ban. This is not a ban rifle. This is actually a pre-ban rifle and one other cool feature is it looks like it has a push pin here in the front but you'll notice it actually has a screw holding the pin in place. It is a push pin but you have to remove this screw piece then you can push out the pin which looks normal on the other side of the rifle. Alright, so how did the two rifles perform this afternoon? Well, let's take a look at the groups. We shot quite a few groups this afternoon with both rifles. I've taken the best and the worst group that each rifle printed. Let's talk about the SP-1 first. The best group the SP-1 printed today was a two-inch group, five-shot group with Wolf Gold ammunition. Not too bad. The lighting conditions kept changing throughout the afternoon, and you know, as it, as it got darker, the groups definitely started to open up, and we started to see groups like the next group, the worst group that the SP-1 printed. And this one measures three and three-eighths of an inch. So that's the worst it did. Five shots, 100 yards. All right, so how did the A2 fare? Well, the A2 printed the tightest group this afternoon just one and a half inches, three rounds, pretty much through the same hole here. I was really impressed by that. Now that's the best I've seen the Wolf Gold ammunition shoot ever, even with the scoped rifle. So I uh, got pretty lucky with that one. I was really happy with that group. One and a half inches, the worst group. So the A2 not only printed the best group, but it also printed the worst group. The worst group was turned in by the A2 with a five shot, four inch group at 100 yards. And I'll guarantee you that was all the shooter. This is when it started raining and getting dark outside, the thunderstorm was rolling through. So 
Um, there you have it. Which one of the rifles is more accurate? I think it's pretty much an even draw. With 55 grain ammunition, they're both capable of putting down similar sized groups. And that's what it kind of boils down to. In my personal experience in dealing with 1 in 7, 1 in 8, 1 in 9, and even 1 in 12 inch twist guns with 55 grain ball, I see similar results. I can't find any empirical data that proves that the 1 in 7 consistently shoots M193 ball type ammunition any better than the other twist rates, which are slightly slower. What I will say is the 1 in 7 is definitely better suited for shooting heavier bullets, 69 grain, 77 OTMs, things like that. We did fire off one five shot group with the Black Hill 69 grain match out of the one and 12 inch twist SP1. And we saw that it shot about a three inch group at hundred yards, a little over three inches, which actually is comparable to what some of the groups were that we shot with 55 grain ball. What I did note though, is that it did stabilize the bullet. The bullets did not keyhole or strike the paper sideways. So in the end, both rifles about the same in terms of accuracy. One thing I did find is that, I guess I've always known, is that the A2 with its combat adjustable sights, it's definitely easier to shoot at range. It's easier to dial in elevation. You have a drum here that it's marked and you can dial it out to, you know, six, I think it's, it's marked out to 800 meters. Uh, I was dialing it up to just under six and shooting and hitting a steel plate that's 24 inches in size at 500 yards. I found it very easy to do to repeatedly hit that with the Wolf Gold ammunition using the iron sights. So the gun is definitely well suited for you know extending those ranges where the SP1 just kind of has a fixed sight where you can flip your aperture over. You can't really dial in precise elevation. The A2 definitely has better sights. But you know that's again a matter of personal preference when it comes down just to raw mechanics and which rifle is more accurate. You know, it's a toss-up. Either rifle, I think it really more or less depends on the shooter more than it does the gun. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash military arms. Also, please come by and check us out at Copper Custom. If you would like to support the Military Arms channel, that's the best possible way. Shop at coppercustom.com. A lot of great products at great prices. And if you haven't already, please check out full30.com. That's full30.com. It's an online community buy us for us and you'll find all the top content creators from YouTube and even broadcast media featured there on full30.com. Thanks again for watching everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.